Hi y'all, Stephanie here with Minimalist Mom Life. Welcome back to my channel. So in my last video, I talked about, uh, I answered a question on Instagram that I got about not having chaotic days as a mother, things that we as the mom can do to set our days up to feel a little less out of control. And I mentioned in there a few routines that I have, but I went ahead and made an entire list. It actually goes <laughs> to the back as well. And I thought I would go through each of those routines. And I understand that these are routines that work well for my family and that have served my little family of seven, but each family is different. Your priorities are different. So I am not prescribing these to you, but I'm describing what's worked best for me. And if you can, you know, pick from any of these and see if they work for you, then great. So I'm going to try and be somewhat brief since there's so many. Um, the number one thing I have for a routine is that I plan the week in advance, usually on Sunday afternoon. And sometimes I actually do it Friday afternoon, sometimes sometime on Saturday, but sometime in that weekend, I'm using my planner. And y'all, I usually just get a cheap little recollections planner or a day designer planner. Um, nothing fancy, no Erin Condren here. Nothing fancy. They're usually like $15 or less. Um, but the way I plan, when I plan out my days, is I plan the entire week and I've shared when I go to plan, it's not just appointments, but every single day I write Bible, chores, school, workouts. And those are my top four things that I want to be getting done every day. And when I put those, even though I know I'm going to do those, I know that's like the same thing day in, uh, day out, Monday through Friday, I put those on there anyway and I check them off to keep myself accountable. But I also put them on there because it shows me if I'm doing those things, how much time do I realistically have left? And I think one of the things with routines and life not feeling chaotic is being really honest with evaluating how much time you actually have and how much time things actually take. So you might think, well, I'll do this really fast and this really fast and well, that shouldn't take more than this amount of time. And then you're creating chaos in your life because you're expecting things to get done a lot faster than they really do. And even allotting when you're planning. So if I'm going to try and get these things done before the kids wake up or these things done before lunch, can I realistically do that? And if not, switching up that plan. But I love having those things first because that really tells me I don't have any time for appointments or to give to someone else outside of my own little family until at some point in the afternoon. So that means like phone calls. I talked about I'll get to my business afternoon, but it just prioritizes what's important to you, even the day in, day out stuff that you know you're going to do anyway. I highly suggest putting those on the planner. And when you're planning your week, check in with your husband too. Do you have days that you have um, a lunch appointment with someone, honey, so I don't need to pack your lunch? Or is there a day that you already know you have a meeting? Um, my husband's a pastor, so he has lots of meetings. Um, so I know to the way I'm going to plan dinner or the way I'm going to plan getting kids to their activities or whatever else. So checking in with your husband on that, but plan the week ahead. I also know that when you have one child or two and they're not in sports yet, like they're babies, it can feel like, I don't need a planner. We don't have that much going on. But I encourage you to use a planner just for your own habits and the things that you're wanting to do in your own home, not just for the idea of obligations outside of the home. My number two routine is to always have a declutter box. So have some area in your home where if you see something that needs to get donated, you're just putting it right to that box. And what this helps with is it's a routine of decluttering. I've talked about making decluttering just kind of a part of cleaning. So I'm once a week doing a mama clean. I don't do these anymore, really. My kids are old enough to, except for the two little ones, really clean their own rooms really well. But if I'm going to do a mama clean, the idea is that when I'm helping you tidy your room, we're looking for anything that doesn't belong here. Or if I'm trying on a dress for the third Sunday in a row and it still doesn't make the cut, it can go to that decluttering box. But always having that routine, it's there when it's full, or when you know you're going to be driving by the donation center, loading it up in your car and it's gone. Number three, and I talked about this pretty in length in my last video, is having an office afternoon. So a dedicated time that once a week you have during your kids' quiet time, their nap time, whatever it is, where you're going to call for appointments, sign kids up for sports, pay bills, update the budget, send birthday cards, all of the, like shop for so-and-so's birthday present on Amazon, all of those things in one little window of time. And you're using your planner so that when office day comes, you're not like, wait, what am I supposed to do? You know what you need to do, 
but it's closing those tabs in your brain to where you're not always trying to function as a mother and meet people's emotional needs, and physical needs, while also maintaining this whole rolling list of things you need to do. You're putting that on paper, you're giving yourself a scheduled time when you're gonna take care of those things and they don't have to be constantly going in the back of your brain. And number four is to have an errand day. Again, I mentioned this in the last video, but rather than every day schlepping your kids around and every day needing to get kids in the car seat, have a time where you efficiently think, okay, so like where we used to live, I would do the bank, a Goodwill drop off, a library return and the grocery store all in the same day. Cause it was just all right there where it made sense to even get gas next to the library, go to the bank, it's right by the grocery store and Goodwill's on the way to drop stuff off. And so piecing those things together to where you're using your time more efficiently and you're not feeling like every single day, it's just all spent doing errands, being really efficient with your errands. Um, having a grocery day, so either what's, we've tried different ways, but I always go back to what works best for us is grocery shopping one day a week and having one set day when you do that grocery shopping. Mine is Friday or Saturday. Sometimes I wake up early Saturday morning and go before kids sports. More often I go on Friday afternoons. Um, but having a set grocery day and before that grocery day, spending 20, 10, 25, it gets quicker. I feel like the more you do it, minutes to set a meal plan. Meal planning is a wonderful routine to have. I've had times where I rotate through 30 meals each month. I've had times where I rotate uh, 14 meals and then do the 14 meals again for you know roughly a month's time. But however you want to do it, meal planning, is a sanity saver for me. I love not having to think about what I need to take out. I mix my meal planning with the way I'm planning for the week because depending on where we're gonna be that evening, what time we're gonna be eating dinner, how busy that day is, I know what I should be cooking for that time. Uh, my next routine that I think is super helpful, and this might be the one I get the most pushback for, but clean your kitchen entirely after each meal. So I was raised in a household that was not particularly neat but, and I love my parents, but this was a routine that was hammered into us. When breakfast is over, all the dishes are done, the counters are wiped down, everything's put up. When lunch is over, the same. When dinner is over, the same. And involve your kids in this for sure, but always starting at ground level when you go to cook or when you go to be in your kitchen is wonderful. It'll make you wanna cook more. And it's also just like completing the task, completing the ring, completing the circle of, We've had a meal, we've put it up, we've cleaned it up, and now we move on to the next thing. And I really think that's a routine that is good for all of life, is completing something, doing the full thing, not chaotically living in, this is half done, this is half done, this isn't done, this isn't half done. And if you clean your kitchen after each meal, and I'm not saying you have to mop after every meal, but if you wipe down the counters, put the food away, put the dishes in the dishwasher, or hand wash them really quick, uh, it's easier. <laughs> like you don't have any backlog of dishes. You're not playing catch up when you go to your kitchen again. You don't have this big gigantic mess. You just have whatever was for that meal that day. Um, my next routine, and I love this one. This is actually from a book called Me, Me, Me. And I don't agree with everything in this book, but it's probably one of my favorite parenting books. It's the idea of giving your kids 10 minutes per day, per child of your undivided attention where they decide what it is you do together. And it's not screens, it's not video games, it's not watching a movie, um, but you know, playing a card game, reading a book together, drawing together, shooting hoops together, whatever it is. And I don't do it every single day with my five kids. Um, and it's a routine we need to get back into since moving, but my kids absolutely loved this. And I implemented it maybe three years ago. They call it my 10 minutes and they'll say, can I have my 10 minutes? And um, that's a routine that I love. It's the idea that you're, of course you're giving them more attention than that. But for those 10 minutes, it's about them and not sharing your attention with siblings and not sharing your attention with your phone or anything else. It's just what they wanna do. It's directed by them um, and it's wonderful for your relationship. Oh my goodness, I'm <laughs> spent so much time. Okay, my next one is set morning priorities. So having a routine of something that you do, a few things you do every single morning. Uh, time blocking your time. I have an old video about time blocking. I still love that concept, still use it, but having things that you want done around the morning time, around the afternoon time, and around the evening time. Again, with cleaning up your kitchen after each meal, I feel like it naturally guides you to have a routine around that time. We're eating, 
we're cleaning it up, maybe taking care of a couple more cleaning tasks or household tasks around that time. Um, specific phone and TV time. I've talked about quiet time. That's how we do screens for our children. So I have five, so they rotate Monday through Friday on their day. My oldest's day is Monday. It's the first day of the week. Uh, he gets to pick what they watch for quiet time. Now it has to be age appropriate um, and mom approved and not a full blown movie. I mean, we do that like sometimes, but rarely do they get a full blown movie, but they get however long, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it is. And that's the only time that I typically give them screens. There are certainly exceptions, but having that set TV time keeps them from asking for the TV to be on any other time. It does allow them to have screens, but I feel like it shows them a boundary with screens and it allows me to have screen time because they're during their quiet time. I don't feel bad if I want to catch up on a YouTube video or want to scroll Instagram or it's like it's quiet time right now. And that's how I have time to have a quiet enough house to be making this video. So having set TV time or phone time for yourself times when you're like, I'm not going to be on my phone from this time to this time, but I am going to allow myself to have it here. Things in moderation rather than extremes on either side. Homeschool subjects in set order. And this is particular, obviously, to homeschool moms, but I have found it very helpful for my kids if we structure homeschooling in a way that you flow from one subject to the next each day the same. It keeps it from like, postponing subjects that you don't enjoy or people being at different areas in school instead of just all we are doing a school it is school time we start with this and naturally if they get one subject done faster than their sibling then they go on to the next but that seems to be helpful is structuring even the subjects in the order in which we go um daily movement having a rhythm and a routine of exercise and one thing I would say with this to make yourself more successful is give yourself options for what that exercise looks like. So rather than saying, I'm doing this workout program and I have to do it every single day and it's really intense and it's a hit cardio workout, say, okay, I'm going to move every day for 10 to 30 minutes. And I have the option to walk. I have the option to lift weights. I have the option to do a YouTube workout or whatever program I'm doing, but I have multiple options. So on the days where I am not feeling intensity or I'm not wanting to get really sweaty because I didn't get it done in the morning, but I'm still committed to getting it done, but I don't want to be just drenched and then have to run somewhere. I can still make sure I'm getting that movement in. So having that as a routine, I'm going to make this a two part video because we are almost at 13 minutes and I am not done yet, but that is part one of routines and rhythms that have blessed my family. And I hope this video is an encouragement to you and your family. Have a wonderful day.